So now that we have our sketchbook uh, made and glued up, we're going to do some drawing. And I want to show you three different ways of looking at uh, sketching. That would be kind of how to make marks, how to do some perspective, how to do some shade and shadow, and help you give you some tools that uh, you can use for your own sketching. Notice I put my name in the sketchbook because we don't want you to lose that. Who knows? Um, next thing would be to get a couple of uh, drawing implements. These are pencils. You can also use pens. I'm going to use pens, uh, but let's just say you want to have a relatively heavy pencil that's not too sharp. You can make big fat lines with. You can also have a finer pencil, maybe um, that's sharpened a little bit better, make some thin lines. If you're going to use a pen, this is called a sign pen, and quite often use these for sketching uh, quickly. You can get a nice fat line if you bear down really hard. And then you also have a finer point pen, which um, gives you that kind of stroke and look. So with that in mind, let's look at some things that we can do describe texture and surface with. And in this case I've drawn four squares and I'm just going to use the fine pen in this case and just kind of start to make some lines that maybe get close together at some point and suggest a different kind of surface by just grouping the lines further or farther apart. You might use curves like that. You could do the same thing where things get farther apart. Maybe there's a little dot in the middle and suddenly it looks like wood. Uh, you could do different kinds of diagonal shapes. You could do a dot dash pattern like so. You can get that all filled in. And then also if you just want to do something like a dot pattern um, where you just kind of use a maybe a grouping of dots that's wider at the end and suddenly you have a different kind of a texture. So I'll just use these techniques to do a little bit of a example uh, on a few things. Um, so for instance let's just say we're drawing a a tree branch or something like that where we've got uh, kind of a sinuous form it's coming up and it's going up and over and um, then we can use this fine line to just kind of come in and trace the form with our lines and all of a sudden we've got something that might look like bark you could do that on, uh, let's say there was a cube of, uh, oh, I don't know, concrete or something like that. We could start to use that idea for describing texture on the side. One side might be in shadow. Maybe it has some more dots. We'll get into shade and shadow in a moment, but I'm just going to use it as an example. Maybe the light is coming from this direction, so maybe you just have a few dots here. And all of a sudden you've got a form that's going to have some kind of directionality to it. You could even add a little bit of shadow in the background as the sun is bearing down on this side to give you some texture in, in the ground. So those are two examples of using marks to describe texture and surface. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, shade and shadow and um, it's really kind of a simple approach. You're looking for the light source of whatever object you're illuminating and in this case I've got two examples. One is let's say if the sun is coming from the left and we have this cube that I've drawn, what happens to the surfaces? And one can see that you know at the top it's still very brightly lit but maybe at the back side uh, which might be the darkest, you would have um, perhaps a darkest, uh, darker surface and we might make a lot of marks on that as I described earlier. 
Um, one side might be a little less so, and then you also have a shadow on the ground that more or less traces the shape of this edge, this edge, and wherever that sun is coming to and cutting off the surface of the box. So that's why I drew these slightly slanted and there could be a line like that on the back side. So once again if the light source, you know, it could be the sun, it could be a lamp, um, is illuminating the right side for instance, we have the same thing only somewhat mirrored. And I'm going to make this back side a little bit darker just for emphasis. And um, and then we have again maybe a lighter surface. This would be the brightest because the sun is coming right on top of it. And then again the back shadow might be something like that where I'm taking the sun source direction and just kind of cutting that edge and it makes that line. And then this edge is that line. This edge is that line and the back corner is that line. So that's kind of a just a real kind of theory of shade and shadow. Um, next I want to kind of do a real quick um, example and I've got my apple here and you can see that the light source is over there and we've got a shadow here on the ground we've got some darker areas here along the bottom and there's a real dark shadow right along the bottom there's a highlight right there where that light is actually reflecting off the surface of the apple it's also a little dark detail in here where we have an indent. So, you know, you just try your best. I think I would still, in this case, maybe uh, let's go with a thick line on the outside and kind of describe that apple shape. And here again, um, don't worry about making mistakes. It's, it's okay to go over your lines and, um, you know, it's not going to be photorealism as we talked about earlier. Um, I've got a little bit of core up there and it's going to have a little bit of a bend to it and it kind of dives down into this this hole which is kind of we could describe with another circle. So um, you can see very quickly that that's not a perfect drawing but if we add a little bit of shade now what happens to that form as we kind of and here I'm using my marks. I'm actually grouping them a little bit tighter together as I come to the edge. And then these can actually get wider and suggest a, a little bit of the curvature of the shape. Um, we can extend these up a little bit, I think. Um, we could bring some down into the, the surface of the, the interior of the apple. Um, we could bring this around a little bit more and then and then look for that shape. I've drawn it a little too large to show the whole shadow, but we could we could start the shadow and knowing that the light source is is here in my example and it's it's shining this way. So again, we're trying to find the highlights and the dark spots um, to do the shadowing. So in this case, we could come back here and just go almost off the page and that's going to describe your shadow as it goes back this way. I think we need a little more shading here. We could do a little bit of, uh, as we did before, a little bit of cross hatching is what this technique is called uh, for the heaviest shadows and then um, here we might also do that in the other direction. Um, we still have some shadow up here that we should probably describe um, just little single lines up here so that kind of peters out until you get to the top of the apple and of course there we have the um, most illuminated surface. We might add some actual, remember our texture from the other discussion we just had. We want to probably get that core a little lower and maybe there's um, some deeper shadow right there where this this deep core uh, of the apple. So, you know, not a tremendous drawing, but I think it kind of describes a little bit more of what's going on with this surface if you can just use marks to try to describe the shadow that's occurring from your light source.